Good morning, guys. I was too lazy to walk the twenty or so feet to the Promethean board, and I also wanted to avoid the awkward staring and talking, so I will talk about thermal dynamics while sitting comfortably in my chair. So what's the big deal about thermal dynamics? Well, understanding the laws of it will help you understand why energy is so important and essential to the world. You need energy to change matter into different states. You need energy to make or break chemical bonds. You need to understand how energy itself changes into different forms. And the laws of thermodynamics is a great way to understand how that all works. So let's start with the basics. You got a hot pan that's been sitting over a fire for, I don't know, five minutes. And some butter. You slap the butter on the pan and the butter melts. Why? Why doesn't the pan just freeze up like the butter? Yeah, it sounds like a dumb question, but it's a legitimate one. Looking at things on a molecular level, you can see that molecules are constantly moving but they don't really care where they're going. The kinetic energy of these molecules is basically heat. Now when you have a hot pan and the butter, the kinetic energies, the heat, are obviously different. The pan's molecules are moving faster than the butter's. When they touch, these molecules will interact with each other. And while interacting, the heat will move from the hotter object to the colder object, which is known as heat transfer. Now the reason why this happens is because of the differing kinetic energies. Let's think about a train, and let's say, you. If you're running towards the train that's speeding on the tracks, well, you're going to get mauled, but the big idea is that the kinetic energy will override yours until both is at a steady rate. The same thing happens with temperature. Now here are some little facts that you need to know. Molecules are constantly in motion, and the measurement of their kinetic energies is temperature. The Kelvin scale is directly proportional to the average kinetic energy of molecules. So, if you double the kinetic energy of these particles, the Kelvin temperature is also doubled. That's pretty nifty. The Maxwell-Boltzmann, I believe that's how you pronounce it, distribution tells you that the dispersal of kinetic energies is greater at higher temperatures. The process of kinetic energy transferring is also referred to as heat transfer. Spontaneous direction of this transferring process is always from a hot to a cold body. Usually molecules in a warmer body have more kinetic energy than molecules in a cold body. Colliding molecules that are in thermal contact transfer energy, and scientists like to call it energy that is transferred as heat. Finally, something simple. When two objects are in thermal contact, thermal equilibrium is reached. This means that eventually the coffee that you left on your dining room table this morning is going to be the same temperature as the air in your house. Heat is not a substance. You cannot say that something contains heat. You can only say that there was a heat exchange because energy is the one that is being transferred between bodies that are in thermal contact. When transferring a given amount of thermal energy, that amount will not equal the change in temperature of matter that is the same mass, since they have different heat capacities. This means if you had a hot potato and a chunk of metal that is the same mass as that potato, the transfer of heat will not make that metal soar to 100 degrees. Part 2 of this video includes how energy changes from one form to another. You cannot destroy or create energy. This is also known as the conservation of energy. Energy can change into many different forms to do work, the main two categories being potential energy and kinetic energy, which can then be separated into other subcategories. But it's important to understand that any change in energy in a system has to be balanced by the transfer of energy in or out of the system. This means that when you pull a slingshot back, you should get the same amount of energy you pulled as potential energy into kinetic energy to hit the person you're aiming for. Here are some more little mini facts to remember. Heating a cold body with a warm body is a type of energy transfer. Another type of energy transfer is through work. Like the way the expansion of gases affect pistons to do mechanical work. Work is defined as any type of energy that can move something. The transfer of energy between systems is equal to the magnitude. This means if you push someone, they shouldn't go flying 10 feet away. If energy is transferred into a system, the initial system's energy must decrease, and vice versa. Chemical systems go through three processes that change their energy. Heating, cooling, phase transitions, and chemical reactions. Heating a system increases the energy of the system, and vice versa. Specific heat is the amount of energy needed to heat one gram of a substance by one Celsius.
energy must be transferred to a system for the substance to melt or boil. So that means when a solid block of gold is melting, the energy increases. And if liquid gold is solidifying, then it is giving off energy. The amount of energy needed to vaporize one mole of a substance is the molar enthalpy of vaporization. To condense that substance requires the same magnitude of energy. This rule also applies to substances that are melting and solidifying. During a chemical reaction, the energy of the system can either decrease, exothermic, increase, endothermic, or stay the same. I don't know why there isn't a word for that. The enthalpy change of a reaction gives you the amount of energy that is released or absorbed, denoted by negative and positive values, respectively. The third part of this video is a how-to. Enjoy thoroughly and go ahead and try this at home. Yeah, you never hear that. Pick a chemical system of your choice and shove that into a heat bath that is in a calorie meter constructed like so. Styrofoam cups are your best bet at doing this if you don't want to spend much money. This heat bath could be a substance, such as water, which the heat capacity is well established. Allow the chemical system to react and measure the change in temperature of the heat bath. Because you know the heat capacity of water, this change in temperature can help you determine the amount of energy transferred between the chemical system and the heat bath. The energy that has been exchanged is equal to the change of energy in the system. The calorie meter can also do many other useful things, such as measure heat capacities, enthalpies of vaporization, fusion, and of reactions in general. That's the end of the video. I'm probably asleep in my chair right now since I didn't have to stand up and talk to you all in person. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to watch this video again in your own time, check it out on YouTube.